Hello everybody and welcome to today's reading through the Bible in 365. I'd gotten all all the way into um, the second chapter of First Chronicles that I was going to be doing out of the three and everything sounded so familiar I was like I, I know I read this already I must have read this already <laughs> but I looked back and I, no I hadn't but I have read it before when I was away I was reading it the day that it was actually out so I kind of had read ahead <laughs> I think that's what it is but I was reading it thinking I feel like I just read this. Did, did I just do this? But no, yesterday's recording was not this. So <laughs> let's go again. All right. I shouldn't have deleted it until I knew for sure because then I could have just picked up where I left off. But that's neither there nor here nor there. I can't even, I don't even know the phrase. All right. So we're reading 1 Chronicles chapter 22, 23, and 24, and then John chapter 8, verses 28 to 59. And let's get started with chapter 22. Then David said, This will be the location for the temple of the Lord God and the place of the altar for Israel's burnt offerings. So David gave orders to call together the foreigners living in Israel, and he assigned them the task of preparing finished stone for building the temple of God. David provided large amounts of iron for the nails that would be needed for the doors and the gates and for the clamps, and he gave more bronze than could be weighed. He also provided innumerable cedar logs, for the men of Tyre and Sidon were brought, had brought vast amounts of cedar to David. David said, My son Solomon is still young and inexperienced, and since the temple to be built for the Lord must be a magnificent structure, famous and glorious throughout the world, I will begin making preparations for it now. So David collected vast amounts of building materials before his death. Then David sent for his son Solomon and instructed him to build a temple for the Lord, the God of Israel. My son, I wanted to build a temple to honor the name of the Lord, my God. David told him, but the Lord said to me, you have killed many men in the battles you have fought and since you have shed so much blood in my sight, you will not be the one to build a temple to honor my name. But you will have a son who will be a man of peace. I will give him peace with his enemies in all the surrounding lands. His name will be Solomon, and I will give peace and quiet to Israel during his reign. He is the one who will build a temple to honor my name. He will be my son, and I will be his father and I will secure the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now, my son, may the Lord be with you and give you success as you follow his directions in building the temple of the Lord your God. And may the Lord give you wisdom and understanding that you may obey the law of the Lord your God as you rule over Israel. For you will be successful if you carefully obey the decrees and regulations that the Lord gave to Israel through Moses. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or lose heart. I have worked hard to provide materials for building the temple of the Lord. Nearly 4,000 tons of gold, 40,000 tons of silver, and so much iron and bronze that it cannot be weighed. I have also gathered timber and stone for the walls, though you may need to add more. I have a large number of skilled stonemasons and carpenters and craftsmen of every kind. You have expert goldsmiths and silversmiths and workers of bronze and iron. Now begin the work, and may the Lord be with you. Then David ordered all the leaders of Israel to assist Solomon in this project. The Lord your God is with you, he declared. He has given you peace with the surrounding nations. He has handed them over to me, and they are now subject to the Lord and his people. Now seek the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. Build the sanctuary of the Lord God so that you can bring the Ark of the Lord's Covenant and the holy vessels of God into the temple built to honor the Lord's name. Chapter 23 When David was an old man, he appointed his son Solomon to be king over Israel. Sorry about the traffic, guys. The 
park was busy, so it wasn't going to be much quieter there. But now you got the traffic by my house. <laughs> oh, someone's mowing the lawn now, too. David summoned all the leaders of Israel together with the priests and Levites. All the Levites who were 30 years old or older were counted, and the total came to 38,000. Then David said, from all the Levites, 24,000 will supervise the work at the temple of the Lord. Another 6,000 will serve as officials and judges. Another 4,000 will work as gatekeepers, and 4,000 will praise the Lord with the musical instruments I have made. Then David divided the Levites into divisions, named after the clans descended from the three sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The Gershonite family units were de defined by their lines of descent, from Libni and Shammai, the sons of Gershon. Three of the descendants of Libni were Jehiel, the family leader, Zetham, and Joel. These were the leaders of the family of Libni. Three of the descendants of Shammai were Shul Shelamoth, Haziel, and Haran. Haran. Four other descendants of Shammai were Jahath, Ziza, Jeush, and Bariah. Jahath was the family leader, and Ziza was next. Jeush and Bariah were counted as a single family because neither had many sons. Four of the descendants of Kohath were Amram, Amram, Ishar, Hebron, and Uziel. The sons of Amram were Aaron and Moses. Aaron, is, and it is, blah, 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 blah. Aaron and his descendants were set apart to dedicate the most holy things, to offer sacrifices to the Lord's presence, to serve the Lord, and to pronounce blessings in his name forever. As for Moses, the man of God, his sons were included in the tribe of Levi. The sons of Moses were Gershom and Eliezer. The descendants of Gershom included Shabuel, the family leader. Eliezer had only one son, Rehabiah, the family leader. Rehabiah had numerous descendants. The descendants of Ishar included Shelomith, the family leader. The descendants of Hebron included Jeriah, the family leader, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, and Jechameam the fourth. The descendants of Uziel included Micah, the family leader, and Hisaiah the second. The descendants of Merari included Mali and Mushi. The sons of Mali were Eleazar and Kish. Eleazar died with no sons, only daughters. His daughters married their cousins, the sons of Kish. I know I read this. I feel like I read this out loud to you guys already. You'll have to let me know if you're following along. If I duplicated a reading. Three of the descendants of Mushi were Molly, Eder, and Jeremoth. These were the descendants of Levi by clans, the leaders of their family groups, registered carefully by name. Each had to be 20 years old or older to qualify for service in the house of the Lord. For David said, The Lord, the God of Israel, has given up peace, and he will always live in Jerusalem. <clears throat> Jerusalem. Now the Levites will no longer need to carry the tabernacle <clears throat> and its furnishings from place to place. In accordance with David's final instructions, all the Levites, 20 years old or older, were registered for service. The work of the Levites was to assist the priests, the descendants of Aaron, and they served at the house of the Lord. They also took care of the courtyards and side rooms, helped perform the ceremonies of purification, and served in many other ways in the house of God. They were in charge of the sacred bread that was set out on the table, the choice flour for the grain offerings, the wafers made without yeast, the cakes cooked in olive oil, and the other mixed breads. They were also responsible to check all the weights and measures. And each morning and evening they stood before the Lord to sing songs of thanks and praise to him. They assisted with the burnt offerings that were presented to the Lord on Sabbath days, at new moon celebrations, and at all the appointed festivals. 
The required number of Levites served in the Lord's presence at all times, following all the procedures they had been given. And so, under the supervision of the priests, the Levites watched over the tabernacle and the temple, and faithfully carried out their duties and service at the house of the Lord. Chapter 24 This is how Aaron's descendants, the priests, were divided into groups for service. The sons of Aaron were Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father, and they had no sons. So only Eleazar and Ithamar were left to carry on as priests. With the help of Zadok, who was a descendant of Eleazar and of uh, Ahimelech, who was a descendant of Ithamar, David divided Aaron's descendants into groups according to their various duties. Eleazar's descendants were divided into 16 groups and Ithamar's into 8, for there were more family leaders among the descendants of Eleazar. All tasks were assigned to the various groups by means of sacred lots so that no preference would be shown, for there were many qualified officials serving God in the sanctuary from among the descendants of both Eleazar and Ithamar. Shemaiah, son of Nethanel, a Levite, acted as secretary and wrote down the names and assignments in the presence of the king, the officials, Zadok the priest, Ahimelech, son of Abiathar, and the family leaders of the priests and Levites. The descendants of Eleazar and Ithamar took turns casting lots. The first lot fell to Jehoriab, Jehoiarib. The second lot fell to Jediah. The third lot fell to Harem. The fourth lot fell to Seorim. The fifth lot fell to Malchijah. The sixth lot fell to Mijamin. The seventh lot fell to Hakaz. Hakaz. The eighth lot fell to Abijah. The ninth lot fell to Jeshua. The tenth lot fell to Shechaniah. The eleventh lot fell to Elishib. The twelfth lot fell to Jacob. The thirteenth lot fell to Huppa. The fourteenth lot fell to Jeshabab. The fifteenth lot fell to Bilga. The sixteenth lot fell to Immer. The seventeenth lot fell to Hezer. The eighteenth lot fell to Hapazez. The nineteenth lot fell to Pethiah. The twentieth lot fell to Jehezkel. The 21st lot fell to Jachin. The 22nd lot fell to Gamul. The 23rd lot fell to Deliah. The 24th lot fell to Messiah. Each group carried out its appointed duties in the house of the Lord according to the procedures established by their ancestor Aaron in obedience to the commands of the Lord, the God of Israel. These were the other family leaders descended from Levi. From the descendants of Amram, the leader was Shabul. From the descendants of Shabul, the leader was Jehadiah. From the descendants of Rehabiah, uh, the leader was Isaiah. From the descendants of Ishar, the leader was Sh Shalomith. From the descendants of Shalomith, the leader was Jahath. From the descendants of Hebron, Jariah was the leader. Um, Amariah was second. Jehaziel was third and Jechamim was fourth. From the descendants of Uziel, the leader was Micah. From the descendants of Micah, the leader was Shamir, along with Is Isaiah, the brother of Micah. From the descendants of Isaiah, the leader was Zechariah. From the descendants of Merari, the leaders were Mali and Mushi. From the descendants of Jeziah, the leader was Bino. From the descendants of Merari, though, Jehaziah, the leaders, uh, wait, from the descendants of Merari, though, no, from the descendants of Merari through Jeziah, the leaders were Bino, Shoham, Zakur, and Ibri. From the descendants of Mali, the leader was Eleazar, though he had no sons. From the descendants of Kish, the leader was Jeremiel. From the descendants of Mushi, the leaders were Mali, Eder, and Jeremoth. These were the descendants of Levi and their various families. Like, 
Like the descendants of Aaron, they were assigned to their duties by means of sacred lots, without regard to age or rank. Lots were drawn in the presence of King David, Zadok, Ahimelech, and the family leaders of the priests and the Levites. All right, moving on to John chapter 8, verses 28 to 59, which again sounds super familiar to me like I just did this. But I replayed some of yesterday's, and it's not the same. At least not the beginning of it. So, I am confused. Because yesterday I read up to 20, verse 27. So, the fact that this is so familiar, even though... I read it when I was away. That's been a minute. But it sounds, it feels like I just read it. I swear that it's already recorded and you guys are going to tell me that I'm duplicating. But anyway, John chapter 8 verses 28 to 59. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the son of man on the cross, then you will understand that I am he. I do nothing on my own, but say only what the father taught me. And the one who sent me is with me. He has not deserted me, for I always do what pleases him. Then many heard, who heard him say these things believed him. <coughs> Excuse me. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But we are descendants of Abraham, they said, We have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean you will be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. A slave is not a permanent member of the family, but a son is part of the family forever. So if the son sets you free, you are truly free. Yes, I realize that you are descendants of Abraham. And yet some of you are trying to kill me because there's no room in your hearts for my message. I am telling you what I saw when I was with my father. But you are following the advice of your father. Our father is Abraham, they declared. No, Jesus replied, for if you were really the children of Abraham, you would follow his example. Instead, you are trying to kill me because I told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham never did such a thing. No, you are imitating your real father. They replied, we aren't illegitimate children. God himself is our true father. Jesus told them, if God were your father, you would love me because I have come to you from God. I am not here on my own, but he sent me. Why can't you understand what I am saying? It's because you can't even hear me. For you are the children of your father, the devil, and you love to do you love to do the evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning. He has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character for he is a liar and the father of lies. So when I tell the truth, you just naturally don't believe me. Which of you can truthfully accuse me of sin? And since I am telling you the truth, why don't you believe me? Anyone who belongs to God listens gladly to the words of God, but you don't listen because you don't belong to God. The people retorted, you Samaritan devil, didn't we say all along that you were possessed by a demon? No, Jesus said, I have no demon in me, for I honor my father and you dishonor me. And though I have no wish to glorify myself, God is going to glorify me. He is the true judge. I tell you the truth, anyone who obeys my teaching will never die. The people said, now we know you are possessed by a demon. Even Abraham and the prophets died, but you say anyone who obeys my teaching will never die. Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Jesus answered, if I want glory for myself, it doesn't count, but it is my father who will glorify me. You say he is our God, but you don't even know him. I know him. If I said otherwise, I would be as great a liar as you. But I do know him and obey him. Your father Abraham rejoiced as he looked forward to my coming. He saw it and was glad. The people said, you aren't even 50 years old. 
How can you say you have seen Abraham? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. Before Abraham was even born, I am. At that point, they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus was hidden from them and left the temple. I know I've read this. I know I've read this before. I'll have to look back at some of my videos to make sure I'm not duplicating because we're going to end up reading the Bible in more than 365 at this rate, if that's what I'm doing. But anyway, that's it for today. And I will see you in the next one. I'm going to do some looking into my videos and see if I'm duplicating anything so that I can get it straight. Have a great day, everybody.